Let's check out if we can see everything. It's all right, the sound, the video, and let's get started. Morning, everyone. Yay, cool. It's working just fine. So I had a break. It's been a and a tough week for me but let's get back to business so uh, i've done a lot of gifts lately some cool ones and a couple of guys asked me if i could replicate this particular one i have this shitty thing with uh, grainy thing on my video let me fix that first That's better now. Yeah, less noise at least. I'll leave with that. Alrighty. Yay, hello, hello, hello everyone. Yep, so I'm gonna be doing this particular gift today. It's I don't think it's complicated, but I think it's kind of fun to follow my own process when I've been creating this one. And maybe you can find something interesting in this one and maybe do your own. So let's do this one with a canvas sketch. I did it with a canvas sketch in the past, so let's also use canvas sketch for this one. I'm gonna create the folder. I'm gonna call this one uh, Will uh, Tornado. Okay, an empty folder, it's all good. I'm streaming from the new laptop, by the way, so anything could go wrong now. Yikes, uh, tornado. And then just copy paste in start a new template with the canvas sketch. Let's see. Yeah, it's just... Uh, Sphere thing here, and then boom, boom, boom. It's not the thing. And then I have the JavaScript right here. And this is a basic JavaScript with 70 lines of code. All right. So, so where do we start with this one? So we have this whirlwind, and you can, if you look closer, maybe I can, I can pause this one. Can I? Yeah, I can. You can pause this one and you can look closer and it's a bunch of lines and it's actually a pretty uh, it's, it's a pretty complicated thing to do to draw a perfect smooth line in a free js in a webgl world well it's not impossible but it's but but it's always a, a challenge to do this perfectly so i have this in mind that i need to draw those lines and they also need to be anti-aliased and they also need to have some kind of a shadow you can see that they're not just white ones they have some small black border something like that and when i realized i need to do this one i thought that i i, I can't really draw those um, in 2d as perfect as i needed them and i can't really draw them as a, a free js line thing because the lines look kind of ugly the default lines in uh, hmm, where do we have them where we have an example, maybe example line. And yeah, maybe this is a line. Yeah, so the lines look kind of ugly, and if you even zoom into them, they just keep keeping the same width. And there are some workarounds to those, and you can do the thick lines, and you can even have the shadow for the lines. But it's mm, it's just it doesn't feel right. You can see how the lines look like. It's not really something beautiful you can put into the GIF, usually. So uh, I thought that I need to use the splines and and I need to use the tube geometry, tube geometry. So I thought about the tube geometry, which is just generating the tubes, and this is perfect because it's a separate geometry, and I can change the thickness of those, and I can even 
think of an idea how to make a shadow for those one, but let's see that in a bit of a future. Yeah, hola, amigo. All right, all right. So let's start with the tube geometry, which follows something. So I can even copy paste this whole thing for the start, just to see if this works and just to get a grip of the code. If we have something we can work with. So this is a function, then the path, geometry, material, mesh, and then we add the mesh to this scene. So it should actually work just fine. Doesn't because the geometry has been declared already, and yeah, I don't need those anymore. Yeah, and there we go. Simple as that. I just copy pasted it and I had this very thick, very not really detailed, but still this is a line that has thickness and any angle I can look at it still has some thickness. All right. Well, obviously I need uh, those lines to be circles. Like I need them to follow circles. I don't need this anymore, uh, but each of them is a circle. So let's try to draw a circle with this one. I will start with a loop probably because I will eventually end up with making a bunch of those. Um, start with the number one. So it's going to be just one loop, one iteration of the loop. And then inside of this loop, I want to create this curve. But this is a mm, custom sign curve. I think I, I, there was an example, an example of a cat run curve. This is a 3D kind of curve, which can follow any points in 3D. And we have an example here, like some weird knots that you can draw with uh, this spline and I think they gotta have the example of how to use the um, rom curve for the uh, for drawing the tube geometry which follows any any particular amount of points because I don't I happen to not like this extending and uh, making your own function for the path I think it's easier to throw a bunch of points and then work with them. So that's actually what they do here. They just throw in a bunch of 3D points here for the cat Mulram curve constructor and then it returns the path. So let's 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 do this. I'll just command this for a moment. I mean I delete it for the moment. And then uh, I'll do something like precision, which is gonna be the number of points like the detailization of my curve let it be 100 i have another loop j it's gonna be j j up to precision let let this is a new macbook so i don't yet have all my snippets here all right, and then uh, I just need to follow some kind of uh, circle, which is just the sine and the cosine thing. And yeah, so let's draw a circle. So um, I'll calculate two coordinates because the circles are actually uh, in a, they are lying in a plane, laying in a plane. So I only need two coordinates, and the y, uh, the y usually point into the top. So I only need an X and Z coordinate, right? And let's make a variable, something like the radius. And what radius do I want? I don't know, 100, that's too big, one, maybe one. Okay, mm. what's next? X and it's gonna be radius multiplied by math, sign. And then inside the sign, I need to have the double pi. Uh, double pi divided by the uh, detailization, uh, I mean precision, and it should be multiplied by the j because well, actually it should be multiplied by the j divided by the precision because this one would change from zero to one, meaning this angle gonna be changing between zero and two pi, which is the whole circle. Let's do this, and then z, which is the same, just the cosine. And then I can I can do some kind of path maybe how do I call it? It's gonna be spline, yeah. Spline.
spline and then spline push yep three vector three and then x y z which is going to be x and then zero and then z let's for now keep it as zero so now i have this spline so after this loop this is a big loop and this is a small loop i have the I have an array with the, all the 3d points in a 3d space and i can just draw a, a spline so i can do the like uh, let's just check how they do this so they have this spline and then um, just generate like sample closed spline okay let's do this it's gonna be equal new three catmull rom curve and then the array and the array is just spline for us yeah so this is probably some curve uh, let's use this simple hackery and see what's it up it's an object um, hey hi it's an object which has the points and some attributes and this is the catmull rom curve type object so so far so good okay so now we need to feed this sample closed spline object to the tube geometry and I think I think the guy's gotta have it here somewhere. Uh, yeah, they have some params. Okay, let's just copy paste those params for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's have them. I don't think I need the camera helper and look ahead and animation view. Yeah, I don't think I need this blank name. I think this is exactly what I need. So this is uh, the um, the values describing like what's, what's going to be the width, what's going to be the scale of the final object, and let's try to create the geometry. How do they do this geometry? So they just initialize it with a three tube geometry. I'll go ahead and copy paste that one. Why have you? Why is the message retracted? I'm wondering what the hell is happening in those messages. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. So we have this plane. Now we need to create the curve, which is going to be the geometry. So let's tube geometry. Well, thank you, Andre. Uh, extrude path, which is going to be probably the sample closed spline object. And then params extrusion segments 100, something. Two, <laughs> and then params radius segments, which is the digitalization of the radius, and then closed. And the closed, uh, I need files. I don't, I don't, I don't actually care. But let, let's let, 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 let's stay with the false. I think I can change something for the better with the false. All right. So I created the geometry. Probably everything so far is fine. Let's create the mesh. It's gonna be mesh and then tube geometry and then just some dummy material and let's add it to the scene and we should probably see something now yeah, we see something it's kind of broken i think because the radius is too small and because the precision is out of the bounds yeah it's gonna be perfect this is actually a weird shape now i don't know okay um, uh, i think what is wrong here is that it overlaps itself because the radius is too small let's make the radius at least 10. yeah now we have it perfect all right so uh, there we go we have the perfect geometry well, almost perfect because I, I didn't close it actually i think this is the reason but i, I just don't care about that it's something we're gonna do it has just four uh, radio segments i think three radio segments that's why it looks so weird like let's make it up to 10 it's gonna look more like a torus yeah close it to what i intend to do I think also I kind of want to use uh, the numbers uh, that they had in the um, like 50 then I'm gonna scale all the segments just so we arrive at the correct number in system 
So what do I scale? Should I scale the mesh or should I scale the geometry? I think mesh is better. Mesh scale set. You need to set three numbers because otherwise it's going to be just setting. Okay, I'll move camera a bit further. Minus four, let it be six. Yeah, so now we have something right ahead of us. It's all good. Let's make it a bit smaller. It's all good now. Okay, almost there. Mm. Let's try to change the values and see it's gonna is it gonna be better. Yeah, I think it's more rounded now. I want it to be a perfect line, so I kind of want it to be perfect, right? Well, now it's almost perfect. I like it at least. I think I can scale it more. So it looks more like a line. Yeah, it's getting closer. I think the radius could be bigger now. Yeah, so now we have this uh, kind of line. We're using perspective camera. So um, if I draw hundreds of those lines, let's try to do that uh, like 100. And I'll calculate the level. Level is going to be, uh, uh, let's do the function const range, uh, uh, just function range, min, max, return min plus math random multiplied by max so this function just returns some value some random value between min and maximum values no i'm not going to be committing this on github sorry i stopped doing that because somebody would eventually tell me that the code is broken something is not working i'm going to be having a lot of questions can't handle that there, are, there is a code shared for the first Dozens of streams, but not anymore. Yep. By the way, I'm starting a course pretty soon. It's going to be about uh, some advanced front end technologies and some React and performance. Not not actually React. I think mostly about the WebGL and the animation stuff on for the web. All right. I think in one or two months, it's going to be published online. Hopefully. And that's going to be all the code and everything's going to be shared there. Yeah. So I have this range function and I want uh, the level to be between I don't know, minus uh, 200, 200. And then I can use this level here. And now we have something yeah, weird because this is a bunch of random circles. Maybe it should be like 300 even. Yep, EGS as well. Mm, I wonder why it's all... Uh, hmm. Why do they all stay positive? Uh, I mean, shouldn't they go minus and plus level? Okay, maybe I... Just spoiled something with the, my range function. Let's see, now it returns. Everything is negative there. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, huh. Spoiled the math, it should be like this. So, this way, it's when the math random is zero, it's gonna be the min value, and then when the math zero is one, it's gonna be the max value, yeah. So now we have the random values. So now we have a lot of circles. Uh, let's make them white and I also want to make them shader material. And for this I'm gonna just copy paste my shaders here. Fragment and vertex from my usual template. And shader. And then the fragment shader. What the hell? Just open them. From an unidentified developer. Come on. Like really? Like really? 
can't even open the shader. Okay, I, I think I need to do this, right? <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah, well, like that it works. Okay. <sighs> this is a new macro system with its own settings. Okay, so we have the I'm showing UVs. I kind of want to just show the color fill here. And then I will need to copy paste the material as well. I need the material. Mm, I think it's here, somewhere here. Here it is, the material. And instead of using the mesh normal material, I'm gonna use this one, shiny new material, shader material. It's using vertex and fragment vars, and I need to import them. This should be enough, I think. Uh, I want also to have the playhead. Resolution <laughs> and some offset. It's gonna be a random value I'm gonna set. And then, well, while I'm here, I wanna make the let uh, animated, some kind of array, animated array. And I'm gonna push every single one here. So uh, I have an array of animated things which has the property mesh now. Oh really? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I'm gonna. Uh, this is fun. Really? It's like in a YouTube. Really? No. Which description are you clicking, by the way? I don't know. Well, so far it's fine for me, but I don't know. Where did you click to go to the porn? I would like to know. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, so we have the, we don't have the vertex uh, for some reason. Shader fragment vertex uh, gyro cell. Yeah. So we haven't connected the material yet because we're still using the normal material. I don't like it. Let's switch to material. It's gonna be all red, hopefully. Yeah, it is, it is all red. Perfect. Perfect, and then we can show the UVs. Actually, have the UVs, so it's some number which runs between zero and one, and I need just one of those UVs. Yeah, this one. So it changes from zero to one when it makes a full circle around. Well, first of all, let's try to to use this uh, playhead uniform. Uh, let's just multiply this by the playhead. And then uh, inside my render loop, I want to change something. So animate it for each loop. Uh, oh, and then all mesh. Uh, let's save material as well. And well, in future, I obviously would need to use different materials for each of the objects. So I think. Um, I'm curious, but where, where did you click the link? I just clicked and it was fine for me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something like this. Material, uh, let's M, which is short for material, clone. It's gonna be M. Because otherwise all the materials would have the same uniforms and it's not fun. So then the material is gonna be just this M. And then, and then, and then, and then. All material uniforms uh, playhead value equals playhead. Uh, something is wrong because playhead is not defined. Uh, yes, I need to put it here. Something is still wrong. 
Okay, the black hat is always zero now, right? And why is that? I don't actually need vertex shader at all. Okay, it works fine, but the playhead is always zero. Ah, uh, yeah, because I'm not anim animating it. Maybe I should set the duration like four seconds and then I'm gonna have a playhead. Yeah, so now it runs from zero to one uh, in four seconds. Let's change it to one second. So we see it faster. So it's gonna be just pulsating like that. And then I, I, I want. Um, <laughs> I obviously want all those all those lines to be just lines, right? To be filled with the color. So I don't really need uh, this VUV thing to uh, help me with the coloring. I just need the fill color. And let's uh, let's set the color. Just gonna be uh, white, right? It's white, and let's the color here like this so all those lines are white now so now i need to do two things first i need to do some animation of, of, of drawing this line and the second thing i need to do the black shadow uh well because i just did the playhead part i think i i, I do the um, the drawing part too as well now so we have this uh, VUVX thing, which runs between 0 and 1. We also have this playhead, which also runs between 0 and 1. So we need to come up with some math, which is going to be hiding something when, it's, uh, when the playhead is changing. I kind of remember, it's a bit sketchy, but I remember how to do this. So I'm, I'm usually doing the some local local progress I call it and then I need this progress to be looped because I want this animation to be looping or do I I think I do and then because with this one you could make it infinite with even even without the actual one second loop which I'm using right now and inside this loop I'm gonna just do the playhead um, Playhead. Playhead is changing between 0 and 1 for me. But because it's changing between 0 and 1, I don't actually need the mod at, at, at all, I think. Yeah, it's gonna be just the playhead in this particular moment. Okay, so that's why I don't need this local progress at all. <laughs> well, I actually need it because I'm, for now I'm gonna be using the playhead, but a bit later something more. And then I could do some conditionals. And if something, I'm gonna be discarding. So if, for example, PUVX is less than 0 0.5. Going to be seeing just the half of those circles. So if VUVX, uh, VUVX less than playhead, we're actually drawing the line now, right? So I think I should make it the other way. So if VUVX bigger than the playhead, it starts to draw in the line. But what I want now is. When it finishes drawing the line, I want the line to hide itself like from the same place, starting from the same place, I want it to hide itself. Um, to do this, I need another condition also, or UVX, I think it's like this, this one. Uh, yeah, I was intending to use this local progress thing. Um, not yet there. I, think I want it to be multiplied by two, maybe. Yeah, see what's happening now. So it's starting in the same spot, going to till the end, and then hiding itself, starting from the same spot. So that's what I wanted for the whirlwind. So this is the effect I was intending to do. All right. So this is so far so good. We did the uh, hardest shader animation. Now what we need to do? We need to make a shadow for each of the lines. Yeah, I'm using the canvas sketch. It's actually the other way, but yeah, it's the same words. So guys, where do you where, where did you find the uh, the porn link? I'm wondering. 
Okay, so let's do the shadow. And th there is actually a way in a 3GS and in WebGL to do the shadow. For this, I'm just gonna create another object of the same geometry and same material and the same spot. So I have this mesh, but I have the mesh one. And let's also have the color. Uh, I wanna have the color here. Color. It's gonna be V3 and by default it's gonna be new three color just the black ones and then when I clone the material I'll make two clones now so it's gonna be material and material one which is M1 I'm gonna create a second object with the M1 material and with a different geometry so I'm going to create two geometries now and the difference in the second one is going to be just the width and I think the width is just the prime extrusion settings probably uh, no I think this is the width right so let's set it to three so I, I want the object to be bigger and let's also change the color the background color so we see the black on black thing yeah uh, it's 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 not the right place come on yes it's the right place so now they are just white and i want them to have the black background black shadow um black shadow how do we go for the black shadow so i created a bit bigger geometry just just a bit bigger and then mm, i created the mesh I need to scale it probably the same way and then I need to add this mesh and let's see I also need to change the color because so far they just all uh, using the white color which I'm setting uh, hard-coded so I can do this as a uniform color probably everything black now yeah right so it's perfect then the next thing I want to do is to do woof, 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 woof. so the M1 is a bigger shape it's got to be black and the M just the M is a smaller shape it's got to be white so the M uniforms color value equals new three it's going to be white well I see something but it's, it doesn't look good yet and why is that because I'm not animating the second uh, yeah because I'm just animating the one material not animating the second one right now they're black and we can see that the inside they are white so it's kind of a shape painted black but white on the inside but that's the trick the trick to do the shadows in the 3GS or the outlines whatever you call them to do those, to do those, I'm gonna just hide the faces, the front facing faces of the bigger shape. So I'm gonna do this M1 material side uh, M1 is already in a material, okay. And now we have the outline for each of the for each of the lines. Well, they are overlapping for now, but they have the outline now. Perfect. So I, I, probably we would, we would need to play a bit with the numbers. So I think the thick the thickness is a bit is a bit too big for now. Uh, so it was two. The thickness was two. Uh, I do like this. Uh, Five plus uh, something. Hmm. Not a half. How it looks like. Well, it's kind of what we intending to do. Looks good. I think we can get back to the black background now. So it hides all these shitty edges. Hmm. Yeah. So now it's not just the line, it's the line with the outline and they look much, much better. 
So we're getting closer. Okay. Mm. Now, obviously, we need an offset. Um, now they all being animated at the same uh, speed, time, everything. I kind of want an offset. Also, need a random value. Uh, I want. I want. Them, I want them to have a different width. Like not do, not go in the full circle. So let's introduce some randomness into this system. I would probably do it like this. So we have the shape here. I'm gonna have the shape, the code here, and let's get into the randomness. So I think the beauty of all those systems is when you connect the chaos and the um, and the order into one animation. So now we have it in order. It's perfect circles. It's cool, but not cool enough. We need the chaos. Uh, so first of all, I need an offset. Um, offset is going to be just a random, random value for now. So let's offset random. I also need a different width, and this is going to be the math random two. So I can multiply this precision part with the width with a random value between zero and one, and that's going to mean that I'm going to be drawing circles between. Um, not the full circle, but some random kind of width circle. So let's see what's gonna happen now. Uh, because and find why is that? Mm, that's because of the width, and why is that because of the width? Oh, because maybe it was too small and it ended up as a zero, and we didn't have the curve at all. Maybe that's the reason it was too small. So let's do it like between 0 0.5 and 1. Yeah, let's multiply it by width now. Yeah, now we're starting to see some randomness, because the circles are not the full ones anymore. Okay, okay, it's much better already. Now we want them, them to, we, we, can, we can rotate each of them for some angle, right? So we can, and to rotate them, I think we can just use, uh, uh, maybe we should just rotate the mesh. Yeah. So let's get some angle. gonna be range um, 0 2 pies and then right here after we scale them mesh rotation y equals mesh 1 rotation y equals angle so now they're not starting at the same spot anymore getting closer to the whirlwind animation uh, now we also have the the radius it's static for now so uh, and the level is changing between minus 300 to 300 so i kind of want uh, let's do something like uh, what's that zero something zero because it's gonna be level plus 300 mm. Divide by 300, so it's something between 0 and 1 now. Do I, do I actually need this? I can just uh, do this. It's going to be between minus 1 and 1. And then mm, I can multiply the radius with uh, 0 squared, because 0 is negative. And now we could see the parabola in this space. But it's kind of too small, so maybe I should also add like a 10, like the minimum. And then we could also add the... Well, 
at this point you could actually do anything well i, I did the animation i posted in the in, in my twitter but i had a lot of different options which i could also do yeah 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 yeah, yeah. next and just some randomness a bit of randomness multiply by 20 for example yeah starting to look much better now right i think i didn't need this minimum at all in the first place because the randomness is gonna do the minimum for me i could also do the uh, scene rotation it's not the right <laughs> fortunately just three axes here <laughs> so finally have something with an angle and a pretty smaller one for this green size yeah we're getting there but it's still pretty random right and it's not much of a lines i think we could do more lines now to look much better and it's still it's it's wonderful it's still performance so it's 300 lines it's a lot of geometries now and it looks cool um i think i want this maybe be bigger like something like this Yeah, get in there. And we got some randomness, and, and now we can, well, we can get away from this randomness. We don't actually need the randomness. I need this offset to be dependent on the line's position, because when it's random, well, it's random, but it's not, it's not that cool. And we all start, and, I, and, and I'm not accounting for the randomness, by the way. I'm not setting this offset to the material yet, by the way. This is why they all starting at the same time and finishing at the same time. So let's let's set this thing and let's try to make colors. I didn't show how it looks with the colors, but let's try it with colors. It might look amazing. Follow the white line. Uh, I make them less less of them, so it renders faster because it takes a lot of time to create to generate all those geometries in the first place works fine after that because I'm only doing the shader animation for now. So I'm not accounting for the any 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 offset here, but I don't even have it any uniforms yet. Offset. So I can add an offset. Mm. Should I multiply it by two? Okay let's try. Yeah I think this is why I needed the mods in the first place. Because when it goes uh, higher than 2, I want it to go back to the 0, 1 range. Yeah, now it's a perfect loop animation. Because when it went uh, over the top, it's just jumped to, to, to the start then again. So now this is a perfect uh, looped animation. But we are missing, we are missing the, the offset. I kind of want to make an offset. What also did I use there? So just so I could show you like the same kind of animation. So maybe this zero. So instead of using this zero runs between minus one and one. So I can do apps zero. Hmm. Didn't change anything. What? Okay. So zero is just the level. So depending, so it should have uh, kind of brought an order to this animation. And I'm wondering why it not. So the level between minus one and one, so apps between zero and one. But then somehow, it's not working for me. <laughs> why is that? 
So I can maybe just divide i by number. Uh, they are all random. The level is random. I uh, wonder what I did wrong here. Oh, it's beautiful, but not what I was wanting to. It's actually kind of cool to look at it from different angle as well. Looks like this. Any angle is a, is an art now, <laughs> because if you made a beautiful visual, you can look at it from any angle. Kind of weird thing to do. You can even I don't know play with the with numbers. Let's try the cubic function. It looks a bit weird. Or we can do the sine zero multiplied by ten. Yeah, it looks fun. Lots of space for the experiments now, right? And we can do also something like this. Uh, what? We can do. We can do this. I'm just playing around now, while in the background I'm thinking why my offset didn't work properly. And then... 5, 4... So it should be some weird, almost random kind of shape. Also, let's... while I'm still thinking, I'm still stuck on the thought of my offset. Nice. So I'm gonna just change because I already have the um, the uniforms in place. Uh, where do you have this? Come on, come on. Yeah, like this. Just gonna take some random beautiful colors and and then instead of the black color, uh, instead of this white color, I could do something else. Pick a random color out of the palette array and let's just see how it looks like. Oh, it's beautiful too. Surprise. If you just draw some shapes. Uh, another thing I wanted to do actually. It's not yet the randomness I expected. So where's my sign thing that I just came up with? gonna command this one and there was just the zero uh, range 10, 10. so I ju I'm just shifting the center of each circle a bit from the central axis to introduce a bit more randomness whoa whoa so I, well but this is beautiful right <laughs> I like it. Whoa, this, this is how you draw the beautiful things. I didn't expect that at all because I just made a mistake, guys. I needed to calculate this range uh, like before this function, but this is, well, this is even better. I'm gonna do like something like this. Uh, center equals x, and then put it here. <laughs> well, you never know. There's something beautiful waiting for you. Hello, Man Rocket. Nice to see you. So yeah, I just made a beautiful mistake. <laughs> Let's just see it for a moment again. Not with these colors, probably. Something more bright is needed. 
Well, this is weird. Maybe it should also be slower. Anyway, yeah. So now we have these lines, almost like what I am doing in the um, <laughs> in my GIF. And the only last part left to figure out is where I did the mistake with this offset thing? Why is the offset it's not like I expected it to be? Mm. So I want them to animate with the order. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Finally. The Zappa Dilsa. Okay, so how do I make it? Uh, what did I do wrong? So it's an offset. It's all random now. But why doesn't it work for me? So this value is between 0 and 1. Something is wrong. Oh, I know what's wrong, guys. Yeah. I, I, I just like an easing. It's actually working just fine, but because the animation is too fast and the lines are too dense. And well, let's see how, how the easing could change that. I want the biggest easing in Queen Java Cell. Cell. Mm. Uh, quintic, I need quintic. This is how you do quintic. Hope it doesn't look right to me, but uh, let's try. So once I have this local progress, which runs between zero and two, by the way, I could do, I could reset it, quintic out, and then because it runs between zero and two, and those functions for the easing run between zero and one, I would need to do this. Fly by two again. And let's see how it will look like now. Yay, this is the power of the easing. I think it's even too big now, maybe I should play with it. Well, it's almost like the animation I, I posted on the... Uh, I think just a bit... just a bit slower. It was two seconds, maybe. And also, also, also. Well, there you go, actually. We have it now. It's, this particular one looks better with all those white lines. I also added the chromatic aberration here, there, which you can add as a post processing step. Where is it? Where the hell is it? Right here, you see it on the edges, the RGB shift or some, something like a blurred line. This is called the chromatic aberration effect. That's like how it looks like. So when you see it in real life, on, on the, in the photos or anywhere, it's drawn here in the background. It's kind of cinematic, it adds some effects. It's pretty cool, pretty cool to add to your scene. Well, it drains some performance, but it looks cool. So yeah. I think we just created and see what the huge difference just a simple easing could make there uh, I lost my animation yeah it's here so if I just change it back to the linear like just commenting this line can change it to linear it's gonna be like not really interesting yeah but then the cool one uh, what else could we do? We could get back to this small experiment. I'll show you in the end with my mistake that I just made. Maybe if I make it smaller, it's gonna look cool too. Mm, like where I'm calculating the center part. I like to do this usually. Mm.
That's a bit weird. I think I would need to play a bit more with this one to make it beautiful. Maybe just a little offset could make it. And maybe you could also multiply this by zero. So when they get closer, they want to be more straight. Well, there's a lot of space for the experiments. I'm going to leave it at that for now. But you could see, if you just come up with something beautiful, you could do a lot of beautiful things. And well, you could try to do yourself. It wasn't that hard really, right? We just do a lot of random stuff and just drew lines. Just lines on the screen and pixels. Yeah. Uh, gonna continue streaming. It's, I have a huge potential, you see, if you just... And I'm really grateful to all the guys supporting me. And again, it's more about you taking time to do that, that actual money. Uh, let's get back colors. Sure, no problem. Let's get back colors. We could also make them more thick for so 0.5 thickness and can make it more thick. Ooh, where do I have the thickness? 0.5. Ah, here it is. Maybe if I make them thick, it's gonna be beautiful too. Let's try it. Well, it's that's that's weird. Well, maybe you can try to draw something beautiful with this idea. I can also show you what I tried to do. I asked a friend and he told me it's not beautiful, so I have, I've never posted this one. But, well, as a bonus, I'll show you what I also did. I tried to do the whirlwind, the actual tornado, yeah, like this, but I think it was too weird and not really beautiful, um, yeah, but still kind of cool, just one of the ideas that you can do with this one. Yeah, thank you everybody for being with me today, hope you had a great morning, go on with your life. Tell someone that you love him, if you love him, of course. This is a good thing to do. Connect with the people you care. Yes, so many, just, just the lines, you know, you can do anything with the lines. You can try to connect the 3D shapes, you can, any kind of math, lines are everything. It's just everything. So yeah, thank you everybody. Thank you for supporting me this morning. Have a great day. Contact me in the comments, support me anywhere, follow me on Twitter, all the announcements of the streams is gonna be on Twitter. 